Okay, so um, building off of the last uh, video we did, uh, what I'd like to do is take a, a minute to kind of go over a few things that uh, some questions popped up about. Is basically like, uh, what are some key elements that are needed to make a proper trend when tuning a PID? So uh, real quick, we'll go over those. Um, first and foremost, uh, the main important aspect I would think would be your process variable. So um, when you look at your tags, you go to your PID and you monitor things, right? You look at your error. You could look at that for one. Um, that's obviously going to be kind of backwards from whatever you're aiming at in a trend. So make sure you're aware of that. Um, then you have your process variable, right? So your PV, and that's something that you should be watching. Um, I would say like that would be one of the main elements. And you can also do the SO, which is the output. Um, you can do the output, the error, and the, um, and again, the process variable. I like to choose to use the, uh, just these two the uh, SO which is the output of the control of the valve or say for instance in this case it would be you know uh, in in the illustration I'm giving would be that or it would be um, the main element though that you would be trending uh, that you would see how the uh, you know the, the PID is working would be the you would monitor the error uh, but you would also, the main thing you would you would keep in mind is the PV. So let's make a trend. All right, so let's make a, a new, and we'll call this PID trend. Um, and uh, actually, let's go ahead and just uh, make build this as we go. So the pins we want to have are going to be PID. Right, so we uh, we verified that, and then we want to come down and get our uh, PV, which is our process variable. And and again, the reason why we're getting the PV is so we can monitor the uh, current output, right? And let's just say, for the sake of argument, we get the um, SO as well. And the reason we're getting the SO is because that's the output. So um, we can have the error, but let's choose not to right now. Um, let's apply that. Uh, let's go to uh, the X axis and let's change this to 45 seconds. Let's apply that. Let's go to the Y axis and change this to uh, let's just say negative 100 and a positive of let's say uh, I think we have we have it set for 250 so let's go 300 um, I like to use an isolated graph um, and the isolated graph gives you two points um, if you have multiple points if you're using multiple pins it does that so we'll run this and we'll track it, right? So that's the output right now. The PV is at 249. Um, one thing you can do as well to help you understand this a lot better, and I'll show you this as well, is you can add the uh, set point. The set point will, and this will actually give you an indication where you're, um, if if you're overshooting or not overshooting. So again, this would be S, uh, SP. So we'll get that in there as well. Um, get that going. And we'll run it. So uh, the set point, and to make this easier, what you can do instead of, see how they're segmented? Like down here, this is the set point. This is, uh, but these two are basically the same. So if you want to have um, uh, like a layover, what you can do is not use the isolated graph. 
and these two would be on top of each other. So let's watch that if I throw it in manual. Right, so in manual, if you recall, in the prior videos, we made the simulation logic, and in manual, we throw the SO into zero, so therefore the PID uh, kind of goes haywire. So um, <clears throat> I pretty much, I think I have this this um, loop, you know, tuned pretty pretty good. I'm not sure. Um, we'll we'll see. We'll see. If not, we'll we'll you know we'll adjust it. But I do have a video on tuning PID, so um, check that out if you want. You know, that's um, very very helpful. So uh, just uh, to kind of get you uh, some information on that. Well, you know, we may end up tuning this a little bit, but so we're down. Um, our process variable if you look at our trend uh, the actual PV has went all the way down to uh, basically zero so what we do is um, we'll come back and we'll throw this back in auto and we'll see how our tune did so now we're going to be trending up <clears throat> we're going to be with the the PID is actually moving uh, the output is actually on to 13% and it's moving uh, the uh, basically process variable up to uh, its set point. So let's see if we overshoot or if we actually sit right on target as quick as we can. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be, um, you know, this is the timing. This is one that I pre-tuned in the last video or one of the prior videos, I think a month and a half ago. So I uh, don't, um, if you haven't seen it, you know, I'll, I'll see if I can't link it below and that would, that would help you. But, um, this is, this, what I'm trying to, to illustrate here is, you know, a real quick video on, on some key things in a PID loop that you need to, <clears throat> you, you need to set up in your trend to see, you know, what in it. And I'm not saying 45 seconds is a set all as far as that goes. The trend, um, as far as the time of the trend, you know, it you could have you could have it a lot longer than that. You could have this in minutes if you wanted to, and have it two minutes. Um, that way, you see the full spectrum of what's going on. Um, you may have a lot slower loop. You may have a lot faster loop. You don't know. Um, so just be mindful of that. <clears throat> you know, as far as uh, you know, being able to, to set the, the, um, to be able to monitor the whole, whole trend, you don't want to be like trending it up. And then all of a sudden the, the loop is a lot slower than what you thought. And then all of a sudden the trend is, is kind of off the chart and you're not seeing the whole thing. The whole point of doing a trend is to collect all the data and to get everything you need to make adequate decisions on what you're doing, especially in tuning. So, um, just make sure and this is um, some pulse logic and stuff we put on the last video so just be mindful of that okay so now we're going to throw it in back in auto throw it back in auto and we're going to see our pid loop work so our pid loop is working <clears throat> our so is coming up uh, our so again 13 uh, percent and it seems to be you know doing pretty good there um so the, the trend that we currently have, and you see it's going to look slightly different because we're slowing it down to, this is a two minute, now it's a two minute trend instead of a 45 second trend. So you get to see this full spectrum of what's going on and how it works. Um, you see where I cut it in manual and it went to zero. I didn't let it fully get to zero before I cut it back on and said, hey, let's just give it a shot because I'm trying to save this video for a second time keep it as quick and possible quick as possible and just get straight to the point so um, again the main elements in the PID uh, so that you're not going to have this in your tag you're not your, your tag name for your PID maybe whatever the point of it is 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 um, the dot PV is your process variable the dot SO is your output and the dot SP is your set point so you definitely want to be tracking your PV and your set point when tuning a serve or tuning a uh, and tuning a, a PID. So 
Um, and in tuning a PID again, that is something that can be done through here, depending upon how it's set up, many, many different ways, and also uh, timing and scaling, uh, loop timing, uh, again, control time, I mean, the tuning and everything. I've done that in a, in a prior video. I'm not going to waste any time on this video. I'll link it below and um, and keep this short and sweet. So um, again, that was just some critical things you need when tuning a PID loop. So um, I'll go ahead and stop this video. And uh, again, I appreciate everybody's support. If you have not subscribed to this channel yet, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, I, I try to produce videos weekly to make sure I get, you know, value added, whether they be, you know, one direction or the other, you can always uh, just message me and I'll be glad to help out whenever I can. So again, I do work for a living, so, but I, I want to make sure that I, I am able to produce value where I can and spread knowledge where I can to help everybody grow. So that's the point behind it. Also, if you're looking for any kind of specialized training or any kind of anything else, you feel free to visit my Patreon. Every It will be linked below too. Uh, there's a lot of free stuff on there. If you want to join, join. I'd uh, be grateful um, that you do. And you know, and then you'll be able to request special um, you know, training as far as that goes, training videos. So again, um, just wanted to make this uh, video to show the, the importance of those and uh, not take up too much of your time. And thank you again for being supporters. And we'll keep growing and getting better. All right, thanks.